I've stood by the president 100% of the time. I'm proud to do that. And I've said, absolutely, we need to get relief to Americans now, and I will support that. I'm delighted to support the president in this 2000. Uh, it's really a $1,400 increment over what we've already done. Georgia Senate candidates both throwing support behind the president's push for $2,000 stimulus checks. Mitch McConnell just blocked a fast-track vote to send Americans more money. So how will this impact next week's races? We're asking Georgia native and retired Marine Corps bomb tech Joey Jones. Joey, great to see you. Happy New Year. Will the outcome of the stimulus back and forth and back and forth impact the way Georgians vote next week? You know, I don't think they can win votes by voting for this $2,000. I don't think that most conservatives see it as a positive. They just see it as a necessity. And I think more than anything, they've exposed themselves to attacks by not automatically supporting it. So I think uh, both Senator Loeffler and Purdue saying now that they will support it and support the president, adhering themselves to the president and the president's supporters here in Georgia is probably their safest play. And this whole fight has really put a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of Republicans in a rock and a hard place, but none as much as the two senators running for re-election right now. Joey, about 2.3 million people have already cast their vote in Georgia. You know, the question is, who does that favor? Because when you talk about voting early in November's election, that favored the Democrats. And then Republicans were hoping that, you know, in-person voters were going to turn out on Election Day. What is your what do you what is your sense of what's happening in Georgia as far as early voting and then what will happen next week? You know, it's really difficult for me. I have to be completely honest. I didn't think uh, Joe Biden could win Georgia. I know that there's a lot of allegations of election fraud and certainly some things that don't make a lot of sense. But I also know that Stacey Abrams signed up, registered, and got to vote. Hundreds of thousands of new voters in Georgia, and I just don't believe there was any effort comparable on the GOP side. So perhaps that's just the way things are. I don't think that more Georgians support Democrat policies, but perhaps many more Democrats showed up to vote. I'm hoping in this runoff, the absence of President Trump tampens that, um, you know, that vote that shows up to vote against him, because I don't think a lot of people were excited about Joe Biden. And I do think Senator Perdue and Senator Loeffler um, they represent Georgia better. I, I'm not happy with any of these four candidates, to be honest with you. It feels, uh, you know, I said on here the other day, Georgians want to choose between Chick-fil-A and Zaxby's, two Georgia brands. And what we're getting is perhaps McDonald's and Ruth's Chris. You know, this, this idea that, you know, we have the Buckhead region of Atlanta versus downtown Atlanta. It doesn't feel like the rest of this beautiful, unique state from the Appalachian to the coast is really being represented at all. And, um, you know, obviously I wanted Doug Collins to get this opportunity. He's not there. And I'm just not sure that we have candidates this cycle that are exciting and feel Georgian. But to be fair, you know, Republicans need this because if they lose out on these two seats, then the Democrats control a whole heck of a lot. Well, that's fair, but it, it just may not be reality. I don't know how many people are sitting here excited to vote for the two GOP candidates. And likewise, you know, I think John Ossoff is about as exciting as stale bread. So I don't know how right. he ever wins an election, to be honest with you. And uh, and so, I, you know, voter turnout is going to be high because the, the entire country is looking at Georgia. But I can tell you, most Georgians are... Uh, they're excited to get this over with and get all this, uh, what we consider foreign interference from right. other states out of our state. Wow. We're, we're tired of the chatter and the money and the people, and we're ready to be Georgia again. A brutally honest perspective there from, from Johnny Joey Jones. Um, there's a rallying cry that Georgia really is the last line of defense against this Democrat socialism, this radical socialist agenda. As somebody who lost his legs fighting for democracy, quite frankly, fighting for our capitalist way of life, what message do you have for your fellow Georgians? Well, I appreciate that distinction. I mean, if this country chose a socialist path, we would do it through a democratic manner and, and we would be forced to figure that out. I don't think that's what most Americans want. You know, I fought for freedom in this country, freedom to choose and self-determination. I think capitalism favors that by and large tremendously. I mean, capitalism is, there is a ladder, there's a top run and a bottom run. Your hard work ethic and opportunity decides where you are. That's as American as apple pie. That's what we fought for. And I think that's what this country still wants. I mean, look at all the small business owners that might have been liberal or progressive, and they're starting to put those ideas aside and say, wait just a minute, how can the government shut my business down and take food off my table? I think this has opened a lot of eyes across the country. I don't know if it's opened enough to push back against the most progressive wing of the Democratic Party, but I think it's done enough to show a lot of people that President Trump's been on to something, and I hope that the GOP picks that mantle up, keeps the Trump coalition together, and I hope Georgia is a representation of that. Wow. Strong words there. Joey Jones, Happy New Year to you. Always good to have you on, my friend. Love having your perspective. Have Absolutely. a good day. Absolutely. Happy New Year. Great seeing you, sir.